I'm John McClellan, and I have got the great pleasure of sitting with my friend Lynn Rossi, and we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about his health career, uh, at the, with his uh, food lines, and uh, some of the uh, health techniques that you've worked on. Also, I want to talk about you know his being uh, one of the great athletes that uh, uh, ever participated in uh, professional sports as well as amateur sports uh, up in New York and all that. And let's just get into that right now. Lynn, it's my pleasure to see you. I'm so glad to be here. First of all, thank you for interviewing me. Pleasure to be with you. And uh, you ask a few questions, I'll try yeah. to answer them. Okay, well, first off, um, I want to talk about the uh, sport of wrestling itself. You were a young fellow when you got into wrestling, and tell us how you got into it. Well, way back then when I was a young man, I guess I weighed about 120 pounds, and my ambition was to get big, get bigger. And I would go to the YMCA in Utica, New York, that's where I'm from, and would work out with the weights to get bigger. And I finally did gain weight. I got to about 160 pounds. And on my way to the weight room, there was a wrestling room, and the guys would be wrestling there. I would look in the window and say, nah, bunch of baloney. I didn't think too much about it. Kept going. So the coach, his name was Eddie Zisk, about 148 pounder. He said, why don't you come off the wrestling team? And I'm thinking to myself, this is ridiculous. I can throw him through the wall. Anyway, he got me on a mat, and I couldn't believe what he did to me. He took me down, rode me like a, like a mule. Mm -hmm. Every time I'd get up, I'd be back down. So boom, I loved it. And I finally started working out with the team there. I finally made the team. I got to the point where he couldn't beat me. And uh, we started wrestling against other YMCA's throughout the state of New York. And we also used to work out with the once occasionally with the uh, college team at uh, I think it was Colgate. Okay. I think it was Colgate College. Mm -hmm. And uh, little by little, I uh, did that for about four or five years. And then I went to the army, taught some self-defense in the service. When you I, taught you taught self defense. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. And uh, weightlifting also. Mm -hmm. And when I got back home, I wanted to become a professional wrestler. So I would go to the matches and watch them. I, they were just great. They were, right. Uh, great athletes. Who were some of the great wrestlers back then? Oh my God. Cowboy Jack Benson was real big. Uh, Bert Gagne was real Bert big. Bert Gagne. Ruth Vez, of course, yes. was one of the greatest. Uh, he was probably the heavyweight champion. At that time, he had the belt. Exactly. Yukon had the belt, too. He did. Yukon Eric. Yukon Eric. There were so many uh, you know, names of skating. Literally, I met literally in, in my career thousands of us, thousands. But then what we had up, in, up there were what they called smokers. Right. They called them smokers because women back then did not go to these places like the Alps Club and the Moose Clubs. There'd be smoking, drinking beer, and whatever. And uh, we would put on exhibitions, kind of semi-pro. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of rough because uh, some of the guys, you know, half drunk, they'd right. jump in the ring and chum, and so you kind of fought for your life. Mm -hmm. But that was an interesting background. Then little by little, uh, I finally got booked in a territory. They called them territories back then, in Boston, and uh, became a professional. Okay. okay. Well, uh, what was um, what was typical? A uh, month as a professional wrestler. Like uh, you had how many matches and, and you had time to work out? And yeah, it's interesting that you ask that question. I used to be a, a pretty good boxing fan, and when I watched the fights, you'd hear the commentators say, My goodness, this man's had 45 fights or 62 fights, right? 12 fights. And I got to thinking, I said, I wonder how many matches I've had in my lifetime. I started figuring out. And about 6,000. Now they it's a lot, 6, of, a lot of wrestling. Because back then, we wrestled four or five times a week. Most of our travel was by automobile, the occasional airplane. And it was a rough, tough sport. It was a rough, tough sport. So let's assume, as most people think, that a lot of put on. Well, you take 6,000 times of being body slammed, throwing the turnbuckles, getting hit with elbows. It's, it's a rough business. I grew up with a twin, and 
we always wrestled, and it was for fun, but it was sure. still, we were going up against one another. Sure. And um, then I wrestled in, in club sport uh, in college. And then I really think there's two sports that uh, are pure sport. And one is track, and the other one is wrestling. Exactly, exactly. Wrestling is a very, very tough, hard sport. And you have to be conditioned to do what they do. On a college level and professional level also. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of difference in the styles, of course. Mm -hmm. And pro wrestling, you have a lot of what they call hooks, mm -hmm. uh, submission holds, things of that nature. The front yeah, face locks, side headings, knuckles. So it's a very interesting sport. What about uh, Chicago? Now, you got up to Chicago and played up there, and those were some big matches. Um, Chicago was a great wrestling territory. Right. I got like Bert Gagne, Wilbur Snyder, David Bruiser. I was blessed and I was lucky I was there in Chicago. And from there, we would uh, wrestle in different, uh, different states, Wisconsin, uh, all, all the Chicago area. Indianapolis, do you ever go to Indianapolis? I did, yeah, I did two or three times. Not not real often, but I've been there two or three times. I'm trying to think of the promoter's name, I just can't remember. Uh, but I know the Bruiser finally got it. Yeah, the Bruiser bought the, yeah, bought the, bought the territory. territory. But they would wrestle like in the armories and at, the, at Victory Field occasionally, yeah. because my parents would take us out there to them. But uh, <clears throat> here in Tennessee, Nashville, I think, was the longest lived live contest, not contest, but show mm -hmm. uh, in, in Tennessee, 20, 30 years. And who had that territory? Uh, in Tennessee? Right. His name was Nick Bruce. Nick Bruce. Yeah. He also did Memphis, and didn't he do uh, Kentucky too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tennessee, Mississippi, parts of Alabama, Kentucky. It was one of the biggest territories in the nation. Right. Well, that brings me up to this, then. Um, you know, to do those things, and, and you know, I, I see you today and you look terrific. Oh, you. You, you have to stay in great shape. Oh, and sure. when did you get into, uh, you did some health sciences as well, you uh, uh, body, uh, tell me about your, your health, uh, when, when did you get into the health business? Health well, business? in 1972, mm -hmm. I was about in a very serious car wreck. In fact, we left Nashville we were having a trip over Mississippi. And I was in a passenger in a car. I was never driving. Is this going to a uh, going to a match in Trooper Friday night? December 8th. I remember because it was like Pearl Harbor. Right. Yeah. Probably not that year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was the Wild Racers car wreck. And I'm blessed. The Lord has blessed me because three were killed, but I was hurt pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened, I went through. I started, my injuries were started healing fine, but I went through a big physiological and psychological change because I had two kids to raise, I had no formal education at that time, no trade whatsoever. All I knew was wrestling, right? And I was worried how am I going to raise my family, how am I going to take care of my kids? And I started dissipating, drinking heavily, and it went out of control. I became very ill, apart from my injuries, I had severe intestinal problems, and I was out one Sunday, you know, riding, riding my bicycle, and I became very ill, cramping. Lynn, how old were you about that time? Probably about 40. Okay. Yeah. A young man? Yeah. I still had maybe four or five good years in the rest of this, right. had that not happened. But anyway, I hemorrhaged from the rectum mm -hmm. and almost passed out. And this is strange how things happen in life. A man came into my room and he closed the door. He said, Len, you don't know me. He said, but uh, I know who you are. So I've seen you on TV all these years. He said, I read all your reports. And I'm here to tell you, you do not have a life-threatening situation. He said, this can be corrected with, uh, he used the word nutrition, he said diet, with diet and medicine. And before you decide, read this pamphlets. He gave me two pamphlets, but I think the doctor's name was Dr. Neil Painter and Dr. Dennis Birkin, two, two uh, doctors at that time. And it was all about their epidemiological studies in Africa. So that's when my God walked into the room, mm -hmm. boom, woke me up. 
I said, I love this. This sounds great. You're helping people, eating yourself. And I got out of the hospital and I became total vegetarian. I'm not now, but I did then. And uh, I started feeling better and better. And then, in my old age, I went back to school. I enrolled at Belmont University here in Nashville, studied nutrition. And uh, I did a four year study course out of England, distance studying from a naturopathic doctor degree. I did a two year study course out of Colorado, once again, distance studying, and got my nutrition, certified nutrition degree. And all my examinations were proper at, at, at that one. So, little by little, we opened our store. We saw an ad in the paper, store for sale in Brentwood, $10,000. <coughs> I can't remember the lady's name. Well, I didn't have 10,000 cents, let alone dollars. Mm -hmm. you know, right. 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 So we went to the bank, told them our sad story, about $10,000, and bought the little business. Then luckily, I got a job in a wrestling office as a as a matchmaker, mm -hmm. booker, commentator, right. and I was getting paid for doing that. And little by little, we got involved in the health food store business. Mm -hmm. We started uh, helping people get well with their various problems. And that's, that's what we do now. And what we like to do, my wife Jeannie, she uh, has a master's degree in, uh, in uh, <laughs> biology. Right. She uses a computerized machine that she can test people with her machine. Mm -hmm. Lynn, you spoke earlier about um, Jeannie and, and some of the things that she does, like with the, uh, uh, the fingertip, uh, with the uh, you know, the needles and all that, and, and some of the things that are diagnostic um, program. We do have a segment with her. Ha tell us something about, about that that we can <clears throat> look forward to listening well, to. Well, she's great. She's great at doing that. It's, it's called biomeridium, biomeridium screening. It's computerized. It's not needles, really, but the person holds a rod in her hand, and she'll use a probe, FDA-approved probe, and she'll test 58 different acupuncture exit points gives you a reading of what's out of balance and it's very, very good. Okay, well cool. Well, well we've got a segment that we're going to have with Jeannie and I'm going to uh, go ahead and you introduce it to us. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, good luck. <laughs> well, I'm a registered licensed medical technologist. I'm trained, graduated from Baptist Hospital School of La uh, Medis uh, Laboratory Medicine. When I met, first met Lynn, that's when I, I had already had a, a budding interest in natural uh, health. And when I met him, it just seemed like it'd be a, a natural thing to do. <laughs> what these are are the acupuncture meridian exit points. And there's measurable electricity-like energy uh, that can be uh, detected at these points. And we can take these readings and compare them to different remedies and supplements and that kind of thing and see what will balance out of balance meridians. It's, it's really fantastic and it, it gives the, the client a really in-depth analysis of what's going on in their body. We recommend, we don't prescribe, right. doctors prescribe, we make suggestions, recommendations. And if people follow the recommendations, in most cases, it's amazing the results that they get. We work with cancer patients, heart disease, high blood pressure, you name the health problem. And no one can argue the fact that proper nutrition, it's impossible mm -hmm. to hurt any disease. Can't hurt it, mm -hmm. but it can help. Right. And see, the problem nowadays, <clears throat> well, always has been really, People can't correlate how nutrition, and the proper nutrition, relates to illness. Mm -hmm. Most of them are looking for the big bad germ, the big bug. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned to somebody the other day, nobody in this country or in the world, John, goes to bed healthy and wakes up with a bad heart. Right. Nobody goes to bed healthy and wakes up with cancer. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes to bed and wakes up with the diabetes. These are called degenerative diseases because of lifestyle. And they tend to take 10, 15, 20 years to manifest itself. Right. And with some people, they're blessed with genetic makeup, they don't have a problem. But a lot of people do have sure. problems. So, with proper nutrition, with proper uh, herbal supplements, vitamin supplements, 
you heal the body, and the body heals itself. Right. Hey, Lynn, I've got a, a terrific idea. Um, what I think would be great is if uh, anybody out there, if you would just place a question, you know, on the Facebook or, or wherever uh, uh, this you can you find this, get it back to us. Why don't we get together once a month and, and uh, maybe answer some of the questions of uh, some health problems that uh, you know people have. What well, do you think I, about I, that? I'd be happy to do that, but I want people to understand also that I'm not a medical doctor. Oh, right, right. Of course and not. We, right. And we, 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 not, we do not treat any disease, right? We treat the, the person. Right. Yeah. And then, see, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing that's bad about natural healing, right? Okay. It's very hard to get a compliance from a client. Mm -hmm. When you or me, we start telling the client, don't do this, don't, 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 don't. They don't want to hear it. They want the magic bucket, the prescription, right? But the body has to heal itself with the proper environment, the proper food. If you buy a car and spend thirty, forty thousand dollars in the for a car, right? People will read the pamphlet. Okay, high test gasoline only, ten mega thirty oil. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. They take better care of cars. And they take but, care of But in here, <laughs> oh, yeah. in here it's anything. So. Right, right. Yeah, so that's so it's, a, it's a, a complete lifestyle change. Of course. Uh, but um, that would also give me an opportunity to visit with you once a month and, and talk about professional wrestling as well. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. And for people who are watching, we do consultations, right. of course. Yeah, tell us about your, your business. Well, we, we offer consultation. Okay. You know, probably charge for that. Of course. And my wife, Jenny, as I mentioned earlier, does the bomb right in the computerized screen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we have our own brand of vitamins, which makes us unique. I see the uh, Lynn Rossi vitamin yeah, pack. Yeah, And uh, we've been with the people who make our product for probably 35 years. Okay, so you know Top quality. Guys. They use uh, good manufacturing practices, GMPs, FDA approved and all that. And that's what we're proud of. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, you should be. Um, Lynn, you know, there you've got a, a a well known and well established as well as respected name, you know, throughout throughout Nashville and um, some of the other people that uh, uh, that that I know that have also come to the Lynn Rossi Facebook page, um, and, it, and it's with great pride that uh, you and I are friends. I'm, I'm very proud of that, um, and I look forward to uh, coming back out here and talking more about. Uh, the health health situations and, and uh, some of the things that uh, we can do to improve our, our lifestyles, as well as um, you know what's going on with professional wrestling and, and sure. you know some of the great path that uh, where you've been and some of the some of the, some classic matches. But I want to tell you how much I appreciate it. Well, let me thank you for being on my job. My pleasure, Lynn. And I want to thank Stanley also I for you too. Doing us. Stanley Carr, he's a good guy. He's a great young man. Yes, he yeah. is. All right. Hey, thanks, folks. And if you do have any questions, put them on the Facebook page, and we'll have a lot of fun. And, and uh, come on in and see Lynn as well. Uh, he's got a great shop, and uh, as you can see, he is a wonderful person, though, very entertaining, and he knows his stuff. So this is John McClellan for Lynn Rossi and Stanley Carr. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again next month, okay? Thank you.